Um, so I'm going to go over the discharge stick and show um, show you guys how to just wire that up. It's real simple. I'm sure all of you uh, guys doing good uh, electric guitars know how to solder, know how to do this. Um, but I'm going to show you, just show everybody, and then I'll show you how to use it. And then after I'm finished with that, I'm going to go ahead and just go over all of the different uh, tools and supplies and things you need from like a beginner uh, amp tech to an advanced and then even to like the electrical engineer kind of designing amplifiers and tubes and all that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to switch over to my, uh, my phone and have it all zoomed in on the, uh, on the actual work that I'm, I'm working on. All right, so um, I just got my little helping hands here, and uh, you got a, this is a 2K 5 watt resistor. Uh, you can use anything from pretty much around like 500 ohms up to like, I don't know, 50K really, but uh, 2K is a good middle ground. If it's too low, if it's, if it's like below 500 ohms, you might get a spark when you connect it. If it's too high, it'll take too long to discharge, so 2K is a good sweet spot. Um, then you just need, you can either make your own alligator clips or, or uh, just get pre-made ones like this. And then some shrink wrap, solder and iron, solder and gun, and uh, pliers. So first you just, all you gotta do is snip your wire, pull back some, pull back a good amount of the lead on both sides. I'll be honest, I don't use these helping hands too much, but uh, for the sake of the video, I'm making it look like, uh, like uh, I know what I'm doing. I'll use the helping hand. This is liquid flux. Um, I use this a lot, especially when you're wearing, when you're soldering, um, soldering wires that aren't pretty thin. Just a little dab will do you on there. And it helps the solder flow. Even though there is flux in the wire or in the solder. And then you just heat the wire up, touch the solder to the wire, and make sure it's all flowed. Now, I, I do use a fume extractor, which is this thing that's just out of frame. It's called a Koto. And um, it's like 120 bucks on Amazon. And it has a couple different settings, but it's loud, so I'm not using it right now. If you're just soldering now and then, you can kind of get the smoke out of your face. But if, if you're doing a lot of soldering, it's, it's not good to uh, inhale all that stuff. And from my understanding, what's dangerous about this, this the, uh, the fumes is actually the flux, not necessarily the solder. Um, and so I just got the resistor connected to one side. Now I'm gonna, now I'm going to uh, put my shrink. This is where everybody screws up, including myself. Put the shrink on the wire before you solder. And then you wanna twist. Make sure you got a good mechanical connection around the wire and the resistor. Um, a lot of people, people really hype on the, the mechanical connection of, of components, um, which obviously there's no disputing that you should have a good mechanical connection, but uh, some people take it a little overboard and they're, where that initially came from, I think, is the the uh, Navy, the Navy and NASA's um, handbook on electronics. They they tell everybody in the military, in the Navy, and in, in NASA, they have a book and they tell everybody exactly how to solder, how to connect resistors, how to splice in wires, and it's 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 really you know it. You see, I've, I've read the manual and uh, it's pretty amazing, but it's 
it's it's really kind of not necessary <laughs> for for most for most things. So don't uh look is where is that where that fender tie off comes from where they like tied the tied the uh lead onto the onto the pot like onto the lug. Yeah, if you see how they, if they, if you, if you read the manual, um, they actually, and I can, sh I can show you, um, let me wire this up and yeah, do your thing. Show, show you, um, how NASA tells you to wrap, wrap a wire around it. But the thing is with, with amps and, uh, with amps and really guitars or anything, they're not being subjected to wartime <laughs> situations. Uh, so. You, you don't really need to worry about them being that connected that hard. So don't get yourself all bent out of shape about it. It's more, it's more important to have a nice clean solder joint and nice cleanly wrapped wires. Um, if everything's tied off in a knot, it's going to be hard to get off. Um, so if you ever have to redo something, it's going to be a, a challenge and you may end up damaging the components. So then you just slide your shrink wrap onto the lead. This is important because the shrink wrap is important because your voltage is going to be going through this wire. So you don't you don't want it to be uh, you don't want it to be touching you. So I got a little heat gun and heat the shrink up. Luke, where's the best place to get shrink wrap in a guitar repair shop size? And you know, like you know, like it seems like. It's pretty hard to find at Home Depot. It's pretty hard to find at Harbor Freight. Like, where's the best? Buy, buy it in bulk and buy it, um, buy it in bulk and buy it from, uh, I, I'm, this is gonna sound stupid, but I buy mine. Um, I buy a lot of my shit from Amazon. Um, yeah. I, I, I also have, um, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go over all this and I'll tell you exactly. Okay, cool. Stuff. Um, Sorry. Just, no, no, that's all right. Um, I just, for sake of anybody who's going to be watching this in the future, I want them to have to listen to me run my mouth about where to buy shrink. Um, and I'll also have other piece of shrink. This is a little boring for you people that already know the end result, but just bear with me and then you'll hear me run my mouth and talk about all the fun stuff and what. Luke, your shrink wrap is on there. Yeah, I know. I just saw that. Thanks. <laughs> just need you guys to follow me around while I'm working so I don't do this. It's hard to, it's hard to work and talk at the same time. Yeah. All right. Let me get that back on there. But uh, I get to, to go back over the whole mechanical connection. The, the, the mechanical connection is important in this situation because we're not tying to a lug. We're just twisting off. Uh, you really try to avoid connections like this, uh, but there, there's really no avoiding it in this situation uh, because of how we're using it. Um, oops, that's too much. Too much flux is a problem too. It's not so much of a, it's not really that big of a situation, um, bad situation in this context, but in an amp, you don't want flux flying around in the amp and flux is sticky, it collects dirt. Um, and then before you slide your shrink on, make sure that the solder connection is, uh, is cool because you'll start sliding your shrink on then it'll and the heat shrink will shrink and you won't be able to slide it on anymore. Twist it on there, hit it with the heat gun. Slide the last piece of shrink over top of everything. And for, for this, I like to use uh, bright colored wires.
I like to use bright colored wires because you, you, you won't forget that it's connected to your amplifier. Um, if it's, it stays connected to your amplifier and you have a low, lower wattage resistor, the lower wattage, wattage resistor will, will burn up that over a, a, a short period of time. Um, so I burnt many of these up because even with the bright colors, I still screw it up. So that's it. So to check your work, you can take your multimeter, switch it to resistance. And you should get 2K or close to it. That's it. Now you got a discharge stick. All right, so this is how you use it. So I'm gonna connect my multimeter to the amplifier to show you where the high voltage is. So these big blue blue looking caps that are chassis mounted, they're the filter caps. There's that's definitely where at least most of your high voltage is. You can find um the B plus in in the amp, which uh, it should be the, it should be this guy and this guy, and that's where all your high voltage is. But if you're not sure, which I'm sure a lot of people just starting out aren't sure, you can just go for the bib filter caps because that's that's where most of the voltage will be stored. So um, I'm going to turn the amplifier on. Amplifiers on and the standby is off, which means the DC voltage is going to all the caps now. I'm going to measure the DC voltage, and you can see we got 226 volts. Um, when you turn the amplifier off, so I, I didn't even turn the amplifier off. I just turned the standby off. You can see the voltage is going down. In most, there's a glare. There, in most amps, you can just watch the voltage go down and you really don't even need to attach anything. But on, to, for the safety of you, it's a good habit to always connect your resistor. And you see how that voltage just went Boom, straight to ground. Did you guys all see that? I did, but do it, do it one more time. Yep. So um, that yeah. so the other end of that is connected to the chassis. Yep. Okay. Sorry, out of frame, but yeah. So I'll just I'll just do it again. So I'm going to turn the amplifier back on, and you'll see the high voltage. Can actually can you flip the can you flip the voltmeter uh, just 180 degrees? And then, yeah, so we can see it and then slide it, slide it towards the tripod just a little bit. There you go. There you go. Right, that's right, good. So, so we've got 230 volts right there and uh, you turn the amplifier off and the voltage does start to go down. But if you connect your resistor, it goes down very quickly. So the same thing will happen if you connect an alligator clip straight to ground with no resistor. The reason that we use a resistor, the use, use, reason we use a discharge stick is to prevent a spark. If you have a spark, now, if you have a spark, it's basically like welding. It'll shoot molten lava at you, get you in the eyeball. It could damage your component. Um, it could damage the capacitor. So it's, it's not safe to do it that way. Also, if you leave it connected, um, if you need, if say you just had a, a uh, an alligator clip connected to the high voltage and straight to the chassis, and you turn the amplifier on because you forgot, it'll it'll short the wire. It could cause an arc, it could cause a weld, um, cause all kinds of problems, and it, it, it's not a good situation. So the resistor method is safe. It makes sure the voltage is discharged out of the caps. If you get hit with 300 volts of DC, it's not a good feeling. Um, so that's why we make sure we discharge the amp. Look, it looks like it's going to take some time for it to completely discharge, even even with that thing. Is there a number we're looking for where you're you're like, this isn't going to hurt if I touch it? Yeah, below below 20 volts, you're pretty okay. pretty much you're not going to feel below 20 volts. Okay, and so we're at 0.3 volts now, or is that 
or is yeah, that point, yeah that's point two volt this is this is nothing this is this yeah. is no voltage okay all right so you you always read kind of something depending on your voltmeter depending on the the circuit layout things like that you'll always read something um even even with uh even with it disconnected you're always reading some some weird kind of ambient voltages um says nothing's even connected down there's always some kind of weird ambient voltages um so this, that clear? Did, did that make sense of how to discharge the amp using this the, using this new tool that you made it did and so there's so as long as you hit something that that is measuring measuring high or measuring you know larger than you know no voltage then you're going to drain the amp like you can just anywhere along that that circuit path you're going to you could connect it and it's gonna it's gonna find its way out of the amp. Yeah, so it's always a good idea if you're not sure you're hitting that main D plus to check random spots throughout the amplifier. And the best random spots to check are the plates of all the tubes. Okay. So typically if you hit one place in, with high voltage with the discharge stick, it'll discharge the entire amp. Okay. Um, there is the possibility that that won't happen depending on uh your circuit layout so okay. if, if, you, if you're not sure you're hitting that b plus check the plates of all the tubes and uh that's that's the best way to make sure you're safe mm -hmm.